Hello student, welcome to social studies class. According to your routine, this is the first class and as per your second evolution syllabus, chapter 11 it is there, struggle for independence, 1885 to 1918. Now, it was after winning the two battle, the battle of Pelasi and the battle of Boxer, so after signing the treaty by Robert Clive and the Shah Alam. So the British East India Company, they got the Diwani right and it was their first step that uh, the legally they uh, took the Indians, okay, so a collection of revenue, okay, the right of collection of revenue into their hands. So it was the period or the time and the same it was done in the year uh, 1765 and since then so British started exploiting Indians and uh, it was not that only in one way or for one reason or for one cause so they were exploiting or torturing the Indians in a multi way or multi purpose or multi cause so they started exploiting or Indians so at a one point of time the Indians they realized that the time has come to fight the British and to raise the voice against the atrocities or the exploitation what Britishers uh, committing on us. So it was their thought and with this so a sense of nationalism or a feeling of means a love towards a nation or the motherland so started growing in the hearts of Indians. So with this background, the rise of national movement or the struggle for independence, the Indians, they started their struggle to get the independence. Now first we will see the causes. Okay. So what made them to start their struggle to get independence? Now first one is the political and the administrative unification. Now one way, one way Britishers, they started uh, capturing or annexing province by province, okay. So as a result, the British uh, annexed territories. India at present, whenever we heard or whenever we think about India, so the map of India comes in our mind, right? So at that time, India, India, British India, British India included present Pakistan, Bangladesh and India. So India was not India, it was divided into number of princely kingdoms. So different princes they were ruling. Now the different provinces, number of provinces which were annexed by the British. So all these, the annexed province or the provinces under the British rule were unified and whatever the laws made by the British all were implemented or executed all over the provinces. As a result what happened? So it unified the people and administratively and politically. Clear? So. And mainly after revolt of 1857, after revolt of 1857, till, till 1857, so India was ruling by East India Company. After revolt of 1857, the affairs of India took by the British crown. The 
in the last chapter also that uh, the british administration we had a thorough discussion that the Re charter act of 1853 drastically reduced the company's power east india company was allowed to rule india in the name of british crown right that we got now when the india means uh, the british crown took their affairs of india so the administration became very centralized very centralized and the representative of the british crown was viceroy so as a result what happened those princely kingdom they were existing okay but those provinces which were ruling by the british or the british crown or ruling of all those provinces by the british crown it was indirect ruling so british crown representative viceroy was there so it brought a very drastic change it unified the indians both administratively and politically and the very means a very turning point or a very, uh, means a turn took place in the year 1885 after the after setting up of East, um, indian national congress by a o hume that we will discuss later now as a result of this unified uh, rule by the british so people became united next it is the economic exploitation so i said you that britishers they were not exploiting for one cause they were exploiting for number of causes and one of the cause it is economic exploitation now east india company was ruling though power to rule transferred from east india company to british crown but their policies their economic policies these were not changed now it was because of their economic policies so indians were suffering a lot economically by continuously giving the different form of taxes without any mercy or revenge or any relaxation so indians they could not bear all these form of different form of economic exploitation and as a result so it formed it formed a platform which brought all people united now next cause it is the socio religious reform movement number of socio religious reform movement started by the different leaders now all these leaders they started taking a very bold courageous and very brave steps and when socially religiously when people were unified then then the same unification brought nothing but a sense of belongingness a sense of love towards nation or the soil or the land of this country next it is the influence of western education now to rule any country so government need administrative setup and to continue and to carry out this administrative mechanism so government need need people employees educated employees so as a result what happens so british started their western education in india so that they can produce a group of indian a group of indian who can work for them in the newly established british administration as a result what happened so when all this western education started with newly introduced 
the syllabus and the curriculum so the indians educated indians they came to know about the writings of locke spencer mill voltaire all these philosophers now the works of all those philosophers inspired the indians how so when they read or came to know about the american war of independence the french revolution the nationalist movement in italy and the germany so many young indians they went to england they started pursuing the knowledge pursuing the degrees in the newly established british education system and as a result what happened they came to know all the educated indian they came to know the democratic setup and the democratic institution and when they became educated so they started working to free this motherland from the yoke of british imperialism or british exploitation this is the influence of western education had this western education not been introduced by indian then the educated indian would have not able to come to know about the american war of independence french revolution and many more other works of the world leaders so it was because of that and it was also the inevitable from the side of british that to meet their administrative need so they were bound to introduce this western education and like this the railway 1853 when they started in india and the first journey which took place from bombay to thane it was 34 km distance the modern means of transport and communication also they started to meet their needs only but it also served to unify all the people to to spread the messages of the educated indian how to get rid of the british atrocities or the imperialism but development of this modern means of transport and communication was the inevitable part from the side of british somehow it also fulfilled the purpose of national freedom movement leaders they easily move from corner to corner of the country and aware the fellow indians about the british intention they are activities their atrocities and their looting now next we will see the role of press printing press also played a very important role in creating the political awareness among the people and these are mainly done through the writing of different newspaper fortnight journal weekly journal monthly journals different and the distinguished leaders and the freedom fighter they started <coughs> writing all the activities or the negative acts or the activities which goes against the interest of the indians whatever carried at that time by the british so they start writing in the newspaper or the different journals and as a result so indians they came to know about the main motives and the intentions of the british and as a result so what happened indians they became united and unified now next we will see the repressive policy of the lord lytton lord lytton he was the viceroy in the period 1876 to 1880 who reduced the maximum age limit to appear in the civil service examination from 21 to 
and he also tried to silence the opposition by enforcing the vernacular press act now this press act government the uh, british government at that time used to censor the press the different printing media means they used to ban the publishing of different print media now vernacular press act by passing that act and also arm act in the year 1876 so vernacular means the local language now so he wanted to silence the opposition by passing this act and this act will not allow the publishing of the journals in the local language so if this were not done okay so the indians they will come to they will not be able to know about the moves and the activities of the government and the opposition they used to do all this in the mainly in the vernacular language because the indians they love to read in the local language and in bengali one line is also there there je bhasha hashi ka desh hai to amar matri bhasha so everybody everybody love to read or talk or lead their life in the mother language now next it is important cause it is the ilbert bill controversy now sir ilbert he was the law member of the viceroy executive council who introduced a bill in the year 1883 during the viceroyalty of lord ripon period so that bill state that and the bill was introduced to bring a parity or being to bring a equality in the power of english and the indian judges mainly in the field of trial of european for a criminal offence but the european opposed the bill as the european they used to think themselves that they they are superior and the indians are inferior and the inferior cannot try a superior man this is the main reason that the europeans they were opposing the bill and finally a sort of compromise was reached that the indian judges they were given power to try european offen european offender on condition that the accused were to have the benefit of trial by jury now this jury member the half of this member were to be european and half of the members were to be european and half should be agree on this two two now whether the offender it is guilty found to be guilty or not means more than half of the member should agree on that now this discrimination made the indian aware about the selfish nature of the british and however the ilbert bill brought a parity in the indian judicial system now next we will see the these are the different causes of rise of national movement and all these causes form the platform or the background for the rise of national movement rising of this national movement or a feeling a national feeling or a feeling towards or a love towards this motherland it was not a over uh, overnight love and affection so it was because of the continuous or decade after decade exploitation or the british atrocities which unified the indians and some of these causes here we have discussed and now next we will see that so though the all these causes 
unified the Indians, but the Indians they need a platform, a base to continue their struggle to get independence. And now we will see the that base or the platform. It is Indian National Congress. Now Indian National Congress it was also not formed over the night. So okay, some of the organization before Indian National Congress, some of the organization also formed small organization, forerunner organization it is also called or said. Indian National Congress it was formed in the year 1885 and before that some of the small organization form and after that so pan india level organization was formed and some of the small these are uh, dadabai noroji founded east india association in london in the year 1866 and next one formed by uh, form it is a uh, purna sarvajanik shava it was started in the year 1870 under the leadership of justice ranade and next it is founded by Surendranath Benarji, the Indian Association in the year 1876. In the year 1883, under the banner of this Indian Association, Surendranath Benarji, he convened a conference, national level conference. So in that conference, so birth of the Indian National took place. Now we will see the birth of Indian National Congress this international congress provided the freedom fighter a national level platform and it was the first all india level organization or the platform it is believed that a or hume a retired member of the indian civil service has played a very had played a very major role in the formation of this organization and that is why he is considered as the father of or founder of this Indian National Congress. Now, why he was much eager or willing to form such an organization? So, he at that time, he knew it very well that the same organization will serve as the platform or base where uh, through which the Indian leader they will fight against the British or they will continue their movement against the British. Now British they or A.O. Hume he was very much well aware about the grievances, dissatisfaction, atrocities, disgruntlement about the Indians. Now to release all this disgruntlement or the dissatisfaction, so he wanted to create a platform so that so that all this dissatisfaction can be released through this organization. And that is why now I can give one example here. It is that we all know about the pressure cooker. Whenever we cook something in the pressure cooker, so the pressure cooker release eats the excess pressure through this whistle okay through this whistle it comes out the means through the whistle the over or excess pressure comes out now whatever the here the pressure it is the people's dissatisfaction disgruntlement okay so the Indians dissatisfaction towards the British government. So whatever are the dissatisfactions are there. So A.O. him he wanted to release all this through this organization. That is why he, he played major role in the formation of this organization. Now after forming this organization the first session of the Congress held in Bombay in the year 1885 when the this the session was presided by Umesh Chandra Banerji and total 72 delegates took part in the session. Now some of the delegates Dadabai Noroji, K.T. Telang, Ferasha Mehta, Badaruddin Tayyabji, Justice Ranade and others. 
now with what object objectives this indian national congress it was formed now we will see the four objectives are there now first of the objective it is to promote friendly relation between political workers from all parts of india friendly relation without friendship without friend friendly relation between the political war workers okay it is not quite not possible to to get independence from the yoke of british that is why friendship it is very important and that need to be promoted and second objective it is the promotion of national unity among the lovers of the country national unity should also be there and that also should be promoted if national unity is not there so if this unity is there if people are unified then only the main objective means this independence this can be achieved next it is the formulation of popular demand and placing them before the government and demand from time to time demand will be formulated and this will be placed in front of the government so that according to the wishes of the people so demands will be formulated and will be placed in front of the government so that the same can be fulfilled and organizing the public opinion in the country and the public opinion will also be organized in the country what people want from from the government and and this opinion will be taken and by taking the same and accordingly the different popular demand will also be formulated now this is these are the objective of the indian national congress next we will see in the congress all fingers are not same two person are not same okay so in the congress also two groups emerge one is the moderates one is extremist now moderates are those leader who put their demand before the government in a very peaceful manner through petition writing and memorandum and all this they carry their agitation through petition and all this and some of the moderate leaders include shurendranath benerji dadabai noroji gopal krishna gokhale and many more now this moderate leaders they also have been criticized for their beggarly methods of prayers and petitions but somehow they also infused a sense of nationalism among the indians their contribution also here cannot be overlooked now dadabai narojis his brain theory it is very popular through his famous brain theory he explain how the indian wealth wealth was being taken away from india to england now next we will see the extremist now extremist extremist the extremist leader which uh, they did not like the method of moderates they wanted some radical changes in the indian national congress now the extremists include lal pal pal bal gangadhar tilak bipin chandra pal lala lajpat rai arobindo ghosh this mainly bal gangadhar tilak bipin chandra pal and the lala lajpat rai this trio are popularly known as the lal bal pal so radicals means here the extremist they laid down their objective is a free independent india and tilak bal gangadhar tilak 
He declared, Swaraj is my birthright and I will have it. So, there was a great difference regarding the method of struggle of these two factions, extremist and the moderates. These extremists, they believe in the radical system. Whatever I need, I will take it. Whatever method need to be adopted, that I shall adopt or take, but I will have it. And what moderate opines that? So, through petition, memorandum and the writings. So, we will put our demand in front of the government and we will follow a very peaceful and the constitutional way to meet our objectives or to fulfill our needs. Radicals, they also believe in the boycotting of the foreign goods, boycotting government services, titles and the imported or the introduced, newly introduced English education. They are opposed of all this. Whatever British had introduced at all at that time, so they oppose all these things and they believe. So directly following all these, the British are imparting their education. It is not good. So if they boycott all this, if all Indians boycott all this, then British, so they are bound to leave the country. So it was their belief. So these are the two factions and their ideas and their uh, philosophical or ideological differences. Now, how this split took place between these extremists and the moderates, that we will see now. In the year 1906, in the Calcutta Congress session, Swaraj was proclaimed, proclaimed as the goal of India by the Congress president for the first time. Swaraj was taken as the sole objective or the proclaim as the goal of the Indian National Congress for the first time, but the moderates, they are aware of the view that the same should be attained through constitutional means. On the other hand, the extremists, they are aware of the view that, so unless they put strong pressure on the government, they could never achieve their objectives or the goals. Clear? So these are the ideological difference between moderates and the extremists. Now Swaraj is means, means home rule, okay? Self rule. Now this resulted, this ideological differences resulted the splitting of the Congress into two factions. And Extremists, they proposed the name of Lala Lajpat Rai as the president of Surat session and moderates, moderates they proposed the Ras Bihari Bose as the president. And in the year 1907, when the Surat session began in the month of December, so it was a situation of utter confusion that the Congress got split and for nine years extremists kept out of the Congress. Now next we will see the, this is the uh, splitting of National Congress again they all, uh, again they unified in uh, later period that we will see in the subsequent topic. Now partition of Bengal, partition of Bengal it effective came into effect from 16 October 1905 and the same it was done during the Viceroyalty of Lord Karjan. Lord Karjan was the Viceroy at that time. Now Bengal was divided into two parts and the main reason of dividing the same it was given at that time that Bengal it is a very vast province, very large, very big in size and so that to carry administrative work 
in a very vast province it is a very tough task and that is why so government has decided to divide the same province into two part but lord karjan he wanted to break the solidarity of the bengali nationalism which was growing and taking place in the province he saw that a sense of nationalism or a unity between hindus and the muslims these are taking place in the bengal and he was much afraid that if this become very strong in the near future then the british rule or the british period would soon come to an end that is why so he wanted to break that unity or a sense of nationalism which was growing in the bengal that is why he divided the bengal now when the announcement was made and the same officially bengal was divided into two part east bengal and assam assam was added with east bengal and the west bengal the east bengal and assam the newly created province its capital dhaka was made its capital and the same it was came into effect on 16 october 1905 now when it was announced and the split of this national congress also and the goal of swaraj taken in the year 1906 and when the this bengal partition of bengal was also announced when so the indian national congress leader so they started swadeshi movement swadeshi now swadeshi movement the leader started popularizing the idea of boycotting the foreign goods large number of people also started boycotting the foreign goods and started bonfire at tri section and picketing the foreign owned or the foreign running shops or the other trading units as a result what happened so the indigenous production started increasing and the local this different store houses started opening by the indian manufacturers and sections of the society also unit, uh, united and expressed their dislike of the british raj and slogan of bande matram was earlier forbidden by the government but people preferred to suffer than to give up this great slogan people started singing this uh, bande matram with this bande matram slogan so they started advancing towards this uh, or uh, marching on the road by boycotting the foreign goods and carrying out the different activities now this is all about the swadeshi movement people made bonfire of goods at busy intersection burning picketing all these were the activities which people at that time carried now next topic we will see it is the birth of muslim league now british i said british follow divide and rule policy and successfully sowed the seeds of hatred among the hindus and muslim on 1st october 1906 a muslim denunciation led by aga khan a muslim delegation led by aga khan so he was called on the viceroy lord minto 
so they demanded the muslim this denudation or the uh, delegates so they demanded separate electorates for the muslim and special uh, representation in the civil military and the judicial service now lord minto gave assurance that the political rights and the interest of the muslim would be duly protected now when he assured that it means that the separate electorate for the muslim it means that a muslim they would vote for muslim and the hindu would vote for hindus means hindu muslim separated and so when this will be separated so the hatred all the seats shown and the british they will continue their rule now muslim leader they felt very happy and taking advantage of the atmosphere and accordingly the nawab of dhaka salimullah khan he proposed to form an organization and which is to exclusively look after the interest of the muslim people and as a result so all india muslim league so formally founded on 30 december 1906 clear next what happened after 3 years molay minto reform it is also called as indian indian council act 1909 so this act form and this act increased the size of the central imperial central or imperial legislator and the provincial legislator but this act also provided for the separate representation of the muslim community in the central as well as the provincial legislator and and this separate representation of the muslim in the central and the provincial legislator so which struck a fatal blow at the unity of india now next it is the home rule movement the extremists joined the indian national congress in the year 1914 when the first world war broke broke out there were two important development during the first world war and it was one of the launch of the home rule league and home rule movement and another was the congress league accord it is also known as the lucknow pact of 1916 now home rule league it was formed by anibesant in madras and another the home rule league started by bal gangadhar tilak at pune in maharashtra in 1916 both anibesant and the tilak they agreed that the pune league would work in maharashtra madhya pradesh whereas that of the besant in the rest of the country and it was because of this home rule movement created a great enthusiasm among the masses in india and in 1970 so besant was arrested and people protested against the british british act all over the country now the next topic it is the lucknow pact now bengal partition was cancelled or revoked in the year 1911 after the start of the first world war anibesan tried to unite the two faction of the congress this extremist and the moderates now the liberal leaders of the muslim league like muhammad ali jinna and muhammad ali favored the cooperation with the congress and a suitable atmosphere which was created and and in the month of december 1916 so indian national congress and muslim league held their session at lucknow and both of them they adopted a joint scheme of reform and league agreed to support the congress demand of self government for india and congress agreed for muslim separate representation in the central and the provincial uh, legislator so this pact it is known as lucknow pact once again i am telling here it is that muslim league they agreed on self government for india and the congress agreed for separate muslim representation in the central and the provincial legislature so when both party agree agreed on their terms so this it is known as the lucknow pact with this chapter with this topic lucknow pact your chapter it is finished and tick the correct option true or false correct what given in the bracket match the column that you will write by your own by reading after reading this chapter or enjoying this class and the question answer or the notes that uh, i shall provide you in the school uh, from the school office your guardian will be informed accordingly and 
the same you were to collect from the school of fish now this is all about the days discussion in the chapter you read this chapter nicely at your home and enjoy this class if any doubt is there every night you call me without any hesitation from 8 to 10 pm i shall help you this is all about the days discussion thanks to all